Support for Kalamazoo Lively Arts is provided by the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation, helping to build and enrich the cultural life of greater Kalamazoo. Welcome to Kalamazoo Lively Arts, the show that takes you inside Kalamazoo's vibrant, creative community and explores the people who breathe life into the arts. I'm John Koch here at Miller Auditorium. On today's show, we introduce you to some artists and organizations who find fun and unique ways to bring the arts into the Kalamazoo community. I am visiting Art on the Mall, another beautiful day, and I'm here with Brenda. And like I say, I kind of walk along and there's something that just grabs me and says, come in, come in, and your piece, your pieces did that. Tell me how you created this. I think it's birch, right? Right, it's um, primarily birch bark. I collect most of the materials myself and the birch I take from felled trees. And so I'm looking for a piece at the right stage of decay and something that's interesting and that will hold up when I get it back to the studio. Yeah. Um, and then I've used various techniques to reinforce. Um, there's, well, if you look at some of the pieces, there's cheesecloth, acrylic mediums, um, copper and patina finishes. And then some of the other materials are manzanita, driftwood. So primarily things I've collected myself and I, I call it functional right. art. Right. And, and a lot of this all lights up as well. Yes. Yep. And some of them um, you can use even to read by. Most of them are accent lights or, you know, the little ambient light that you need. Now I see some, is that grapevine that I'm looking at on one of the pieces? But it looks like it's all gold and kind of coppery. Uh, it is grapevine tendril and then I've stitched that in with some caning material. There's uh, copper and patina finishes. Some of the finishes I developed um, with acrylic mediums, so some of them are uniquely mine. <laughs> so, so Fred, well, right, right. When you walk through the woods, do you know what you're gonna do? Like when you collect a piece, is it something that just catches your eye or do you have a purpose for it when you go for your walks? Uh, well, it really started with being intrigued by the material. I'm also a painter mm. and I would be out in the woods um, doing sketches and little paintings and I just, I was fascinated by birch and it's been really interesting to learn more about the material. I was just drawn to it and then just um, learning about uh, the ways you know, different indigenous cultures have used it over the years. It's called the giving tree. Oh, uh, well, you know, it's I've tried to pick out my favorite piece. I really can't, but I do kind of love this piece right here. This is something beautiful. How did you make that? Well, as I said, this started with, um, I do look for unique pieces to begin with, and then it has to be strong enough um, to hold up until I get it back to the studio. It's fairly fragile when I'm collecting it. It's one of a kind, one of a kind. Thank you so much for talking with me today, Brenda. I appreciate it. Thank you. here with Matthew from Theodore Woodworks and where are you from Matthew? We're from the Lansing area. And you said you already got two invites to other shows. What does that mean to you? Oh, it's wonderful. It's it's nice when people uh, realize the work that you put into it and uh, it's, it's great that that's recognized. Now Matthew, this caught my eye walking by because I love baskets but most of the baskets that I have are woven and upon closer look these are solid. They're a solid wood basket. I asked you if it was inlay but it's not so what's the process? Um, actually they're all made out of hardwoods and we don't stain or dye anything. We just use the woods in their natural colors and uh, we laminate the strips of woods together to make a blank 
and then put a pattern on there and uh, the pattern when we cut it gives us a series of rings which we then use to build the bowls. Now you're Matthew, it's Theodore Woodwork, so what's the tie-in? Did you, did you learn this craft from your dad or grandpa? I did, yeah. My dad uh, got me started in woodworking when I was a boy and I've uh, been doing it ever since and really enjoy it and uh, when we started the business thought about uh, what I should name it and really didn't have to think too long. Named it after my dad because he got me started in this. Yeah. And how important is the uh, the Art in the Mall uh, kind of art 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 festival for you? Yeah, it's it's really, uh, it's been a wonderful weekend all the way around. We've sold uh, quite a few pieces here. We've also handed out a lot of business cards too. And uh, it, it's a great thing really for the, the entire area. Uh, you got a lot of wonderful artists that come here and um, it's it's great for the economy and great for the area. Yeah, I've seen some beautiful art, yours being some of it. Thank you so much for talking with me today, Matthew. I appreciate it. Here at Art on the Mall with Iana, Iana, and you are from? Kalamazoo, Michigan. And you are an artist in the true sense of the word. I mean, all different creations here. We've got some, uh, what do we call these, collages in the back? You said it's mixed media, right? Yes. Um, so we've got collage. Um, this is printmaking with embroidery. And what have we got here? Tell me, tell me the process. This is a screen print on fabric. Um, so I took this image from a photograph. I, I burned a screen printing screen in a dark room. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. um, and then I print it with metallic ink, fabric ink. Yeah. So Iana, when you decide that you're gonna do a collage, like let's say this one right here, when you're gonna do a collage, I mean, it's so much going on. Where do you begin? Do you have an idea of where you're going or do you know exactly what you want it to look like? Um, I never know what I want it to look like and I really let the materials guide my process. Um, and I collect imagery from all over. And so many pins and jewelry. You must be like creating all the time. I am, <laughs> yeah. So what's the best part of being here at Art on the Mall? Uh, I think seeing all the locals. Um, today has been a great day. Um, everyone's dressed up. Yeah. It's really fun. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking with me, Anne. I yeah. appreciate it. You're welcome. So much color, I'm attracted to color. What can I say? I'm here with Marshila. How are you, Marshila? Well, how are you? Well, I'm doing great. This piece caught my eye. Now, you said it's an acrylic, because I said that's not glass. Like when you look at it, it, it kind of gives the impression it's under glass, but it's not. Correct. This is actually an epoxy resin, and it is a, an acrylic paint uh, on paper, and then affixed to the wood panel, and then coated with a, an epoxy resin on top. But how do you get it so it's so crystal clear, um, that's the critical part where I take a, a resin mixture and a hardener mixture, uh, mix it half and half, and then I pour over and evenly distribute it out. Oh. And then the next step is to get a blowtorch and try to blow. <laughs> every bubble, every little indentation, every little dust particle has to be taken off and then cured for like 24 to 48 hours. Well, I was going to say, because I can tell that, that you did it. There, I don't see any bubbles or anything. And now the rest of these are on canvas. So, you know, like this one almost reminds me a little bit of a beehive but when you when you kind of come up with an idea do you know what you're gonna do and do you start with color do you start with design first you know I really start with the color combination and just work it as I you know as I'm working on the painting I just play with it I like to explore with movement I like to explore with color schemes and I just go from there and see what happens well Mashila keep doing the work I love it thank I love you. it thank you so much for talking with me today Tell us about you and yours and the band. Well, it's certainly great to be here today. And uh, yeah, we are the Luke Lenhart Band. Uh, over here uh, is my mom, and that's Beverly Lenhart. And she plays the bass and sings and also plays other instruments too. And uh, over here is my mom's cousin, Bernie. 
This is Bernie Steffes, and he plays the guitar and sings and does both very well. So, and I, I play the guitar, and right now I'm playing, a, I'm holding the mandolin, but I also play the guitar and the mandolin and the banjo and the fiddle and the bass and a little on the ukulele. You're the overachiever of the family. <laughs> and who's this angel that's kind of responsible for all and of then, this? Yeah, and then over there in the background, that's, that's my grandma, so that's my mom's mom. So. I understand was born in this house and everything. So thank you for, well, for allowing us to be here and allowing us to feature you as part of our Kalamazoo Lively Arts because there's a Kalamazoo connection, Luke. Yes, yeah, we, well, we play in Kalamazoo quite often, you know, for all kinds of various events and everything. Um, and then also, uh, Bernie and I both are holding uh, Kalamazoo-made instruments. So uh, this instrument here, is a mandolin and this was built right downtown Kalamazoo. Uh, this was built in 1916 and I've had it for about 20 years now. Uh, being in, built in 1916 would st still be I believe when Orville Gibson, Mr. Gibson, the guy that started Gibson, uh, I believe he would still been alive. He know, might have uh, touched it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he might he might have. Yeah, he might have. Luke Lenhart, I'm ready to play the mandolin. Where do I even start? Okay, good. Well, you get out your checkbook and write me. No, I'm just oh, kidding. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do I start with this? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we have a pick here. We're going to use the pick. Sometimes you might use your fingers. That's okay. common too. But on the mandolin, we mostly use a pick. Okay. So we'll and we'll sit it. Okay. Sit, sit it, it up right here. I've got this here. 1917. Oh, don't yes. drop it. Don't yeah. drop it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Yeah. Your, yours is uh, one newer than mine. Okay. Yours is a 1917. And this is a 1916. Okay. So. And I'm just holding it like this, yep. right, on my little lap. Yep. Oh yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Good. Perfect. Yeah. We're gonna. One of the first songs we always work on yes. with a student is <gasps> Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. <gasps> Okay. And uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star has two, two names. Okay. Do you know the other name for no, Twinkle Twinkle no, Little Star? No, I know. I just want to play the mandolin. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Well, uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and also Had a little... the ABCs. Okay. So, oh, that's it. So you're gonna get two for the price of one. Okay, let's do it. That was my it. point. Two for the price of Professor. one. Professor. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna start right off here with the D string, which is this string right here. You gotta tell me which one on this one. So we have D string. Okay. Right just pluck there. it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Nice, nice. Right, yeah, that so we have great. the D string twice. Excellent job. So, so we'll do two Ds. Yep, and then the next is going to be the next string. Which Am is I doing the, anything up here? Oh, we will, oh, we will. Okay. One, one, one step one, at okay, a time. Okay, sorry. I always tell that to my students, one yes, step at yeah, a time. I want to play the song now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah, and then we have the A string, which is the next string. With this one? Yeah. Oh, other way. Okay. Yep, okay, yep. Okay, good. And A string twice. Yep, okay. so let's, let, let's do it again. So okay. D. D. Oh, it already sounds okay, like the yeah, song. Yeah, it does. Huh? And then we're going to use our oh, first finger right okay. here on the second fret. Fret. On the on on the, so there you got the first the fret. The silver one. Yep. And then, then you're going to slide it to the second fret. Oh, that's a fret. Okay. Yes. All right. Yep. And then we're going to play you. two notes right there. Which on which one? Right on that that oh. same string. Yes. Right. Very okay. good. Very good. And then lift your finger back up. Same open. thing? Yes. Oh, right. Okay. All right. We might have to review that one. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we'll okay. take that from, from the, the top. the beginning. Okay. Yep. Ready? Why do I have to choose? See everybody lose. Walk around and sing the I want to bring you into the conversation, Mom. Tell us a little bit about your instrument and, and what's it like playing with your son and your cousin. Oh, and your cousin. It, it's, it's a who it's a joy, I tell you. Yeah, I did not know how to play. Luke brought bought a bass, brought it home, and and said, "Hey, you want to be in the band?" It's like, well, <laughs> sure. So he taught me how to play the bass. Um, it's a K. It's a 1940, and we have in my living room. We have also a K 1950. So, <laughs> and the living room's kind of full of instruments. And uh, it is, uh, it's a joy to learn from Luke. He's a good teacher. And uh, I tried to teach him how to play piano. That didn't work so well. <laughs> but he was also like, yeah, <laughs> four. So uh, I just keep learning and learning. 
he keeps teaching and uh, it, it's so much fun and it, it's a relaxation it's a stress reliever it's it's just fun to, to be performing it's fun to meet the people that you're playing with you know and for and other musicians how's this how is this oh it works out good it's uh, we live close together we've I grew up playing in the sandbox with Beverly as a kid so uh, we've known each other for many 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 years so it works out good yeah and my uncle and Bernie's dad played music together for years you know so it just was the trickle down effect where you, you heard it, you grew up with it, and yeah, you kind of, you learn it, and now you do it, and it, it's... And you all come together for Sunday dinner. There you go. <laughs> I'm okay. done. Yes, I'm took, took a little start. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Now I got to pay you. Okay. All right. Um, it's not that hard, is it? No. Play, you know, playing music can be very fun. There's always a lot of work that goes into it, but but yeah, yeah, as you see, the end result can be very fun. How was that? I'm gonna play it again. Good. That's that it. Pretty good. Yeah, that's it. Very good. <laughs> Very good. That's better than a lot of my students okay, on the first well, lesson. Okay, probably four. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when you first identified as an artist? Well, that's got to be about 100 years ago now. <laughs> um, I don't know that I, even as I was making quilts when I first started, I would hesitate to say I was an artist. It took a while until I saw or entered more contests and then had a winner win here or this or that before I felt like I was an artist, a quilt artist. And then it was fun to say that I'm a quilt artist, not just a quilter. When did you realize this is something I like doing? Uh, oh, back when I was taking piano lessons as a child and my mom saw all the drawings in the margins of the piano <laughs> practice book and she says I think you need art lessons rather than piano lessons. So I've wanted to be an artist all my life and dabbled in lots of things. Although I took a degree to teach and be a high school librarian. Oh. But uh, I was coming down here into a part time all, all, my, all my life. And how old were you at that time? When I started coming down here? 40. I distinctly remember art doing uh, art class in the fifth grade and um, before that I don't have very many memories of anything but uh, I do still have a couple of those things that I did in the fifth grade that my mother held on to. I grew up with it since I was very little I had a big interest in it since I was very little I had a, a little toy guitar before I was big enough to have a real guitar that was probably this around this size. Still have that toy guitar? We do. I think we do, yeah. I think it is stuffed in the closet somewhere. How did you go from that little girl who uh, acted out soap operas, by the way soap operas are still on, I wonder if you still do that, <laughs> to where you are today? Wow, so I continue to evolve. I read a lot and I had an English teacher in high school so teachers really matter. An English teacher, he used to take us to the theater to see like Shakespeare and other kind of plays and he would introduce us to different cultures. So we would go to different restaurants from you know Japanese, German, just to introduce us to different cultures and it really developed my love of writing. So just me reading Shakespeare and getting into more books, um, Toni Morrison and Langston Hughes. And I, as I got older, I went to Columbia College and I majored in theater and fashion design. And from there, all my friends be, are artists. And it just allowed me to see that you can actually make a living being an artist. I'm an alchemist, I'm a healer, I'm the lyrical healer, it's all in me. And if you scream equality for all humanity, then you you shouldn't sleep, because I won't sleep until we all are free. Well, I grew up in a small town, and there wasn't any representation. I didn't know that I was LGBTQ, whatever, and it was interesting as this thing called the internet 
came out, right? And uh, shows like Will and Grace and Ellen, that was a really big groundbreaking moment when she came out on TV in her career. She nearly lost it completely uh, for years, right? And now she's celebrated. So for me, going through grad school, I looked at how media and performance could be used uh, to help people find connection as well as to find person-to-person uh, -person relations through the arts in order to overcome the isms, racism, homophobia, so on and so forth. I was always interested in visual arts and when I got into college I didn't really plan to do a lot of coursework in uh, like literature mm -hmm. but but you had to take some and I realized well, I like poetry I like stories I I like novels so it was really the other way around and then so I taught uh, nine years language arts and I liked the poetry and I liked the literature and I tried to encourage the kids but, but in the background was always art. And mm -hmm. so my kids, a lot of the assignments I gave to the kids in, in school, there, there might be a, a graphic involved. And, and, and so I don't think it was jumping from literature to art. It was like they kind of came together. I'm curious, what do you think makes you an artist? I don't know. Maybe I just steal my ideas in such a way you can't tell. <laughs> I just think, oh, that that looks like, I'm seeing some three birds over here that I have on a table, and I'm thinking, I think those would make a really good quilt pattern. <laughs> when I think about you, you're all about good. You, you want to sew good, you want to see good, you want to do good. Why is that so important to you? When it comes to seeing good, I think that we need to work harder to see more good in each other. And I know that there was a time where maybe the way that I lived my life, people may not have seen good in me. However, as I continue to live, and you say that to me, that it seems like I'm all about good, but I can think back to a time when perhaps you wouldn't have said that about me, right? So I'm thinking it would be beautiful if we see the good in each other no matter what, like no matter where you are. So tell me about Kenneth Freed. You had an apprenticeship with him. I learned a lot. He, he holds people's feet to the fire and he, he, um, he doesn't have a, like a set curriculum. This week we're gonna do X, Y, Z. He watches what you're doing and he'll think, you need a little more help with this so I'm gonna give you your next assignment, uh, A, B, C instead of X, Y, Z. So it was very personal, hands-on instruction. I, I can't relate to that, I'm sorry to say. I've never had a mentor, really. And I always felt a little bit uh, cheated, perhaps, because I never had that teacher that I was invited over to their house or uh, someone who really took an interest in my work. I always was on my own, just exploring on my own and, and following through with my own ideas. And I think that's why as a 21 year old, I was able to do that project because there was no advisor. There's no person like adult figure that helped me in any way. I went on my own to paint stores to find the very best paint. I went on my own to find all the materials that would I need and just went to the wall and did it. And so I, I I would hope that there are mentors out there because I think it's a wonderful connection and relationship for young people or even not so young beginning artists to have someone who encourages them. Uh, but I don't think I ever really had that. There's nothing wrong with forging your own path. You're just forging your own path, yes. Yeah. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Kalamazoo Lively Arts. Check out today's show and other content at WGVU.org. We leave you tonight with a performance by the Luke Lenhart Band. I'm John Koch. Have a great night.
Support for Kalamazoo Lively Arts is provided by the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation, helping to build and enrich the cultural life of greater Kalamazoo.